So one of the trends that I'm seeing right now with these youth climate marches and um, this sort of massive effort that I'm seeing from uh, nonprofit organizations and uh, as certain uh, journalists have described it, the nonprofit industrial complex, um, they have really deep ties to, I would say, the billionaire class, you know, the, the very wealthy class of individuals that have they want to they want to transform our economy into a so-called sustainable economy but it's still an, a capitalist economy it's still based on the the idea of growth and i think that that's the underlying one of the major under, underlying flaws of of many of these major projects or these sort of big activist um uh, groups is that, you know, they're not really critically analyzing the very systems that have gotten us into this situation to begin with. Um, and one of the, the fears that I have is that, yes, we will start to do things like you're recommending, not not you specifically, but some of the ideas that you brought up. Um, and that'll be only in service to maintaining a socioeconomic system that is actually, will that, that does not blend in any any real way with actual sustainability, um, you know, actually living in, in sort of a, a balance with the ecosystems of this planet or the natural world itself. Um, I, I find that it's very possible that the narrative is currently being hijacked by these by these individuals, by these groups. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that, that to me is a big fear. So when I think about your geoengineering um, suggestions, and I'm like, okay, yeah, let's let's figure this out. Let's see if we can throw a few ideas out there. My, and I want to sound defeatist, and I, I'm really trying. Yeah, no, I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, let me give an example, a good example that fits right in with what you're saying. Okay. Okay. So, so in the '70s, uh, '72, the Club of Rome um, published their book, uh, famous book, "The Limits to Growth," right? And they said that. Um, the human population couldn't keep growing much um, because, um, and I, I guess the population was probably, it was about a billion in the six, in, in 60s. You know, maybe it was not quite 2 billion by that time when that book came out. Um, not sure exactly. It can, somebody can, you know, it could be looked up easily. But the point was that um, they, they said that we, we, that food supply was increasing at a certain rate population was increasing at an exponential rate and that alone would 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 put an upper limit to population it couldn't keep growing there were limits to the growth and they also talked about minerals and things that people used and what happened of course was that you know we had these enormous breakthroughs in in um, farming and we managed to double yields double the amount of crops that could come off a a field and then double it again and double it again, double it again, you know, and uh, yields went way, way up. And that made that avoided the the upper limit at that time. So let's just think for a minute that let's say that that technology had not come along. Okay, back then. And if that technology had not come along, there would have been massive starvation like pop- if population probably still would have grown and grown until there was you know uh, massive uh, food shortages and massive starvation putting a limit on the population then humans would have had to actually sit up and say okay we have to take some hard actions here we can't you know do we w- do we want to have these continuous cycles where we get mass die-offs of of, of humans from starvation and then you know, society then picks up and continues and then population grows exponentially and then another mass die off and another mass die off. Right. Or do we want to say, well, we have to we, we have to um, talk about the whole system of the planet and how many people can live on the planet and, and, and figure out how to um, live within the means and be truly sustainable. And if that had happened, you know, now we wouldn't be having the climate crisis that we're having. Right. We would have have, we would have a global population of maybe a couple billion and not seven and a half billion. You know, we would have had to deal with exponential growth and stuff and consumerism growth and stuff like that. And we'd have quite a different world. So the, the argument is that so I see exactly what you're saying. So geoengineering could be like these huge improvements in, in food production back in the 70s. Maybe maybe. Um, 
in the long run for humanity, these things would work in the short run and allow us to continue our way of life and capitalism to continue and population growth to continue until we reach another wall, which we eventually can't solve. And we have a population crash, right? So, so the point is, is, uh, you know, when I talk about these sort of things, I talk about them from a survival standpoint. Like I talk about them for how can we preserve some semblance of humanity, you know, um, some, how do we, how do we restore, you know, an ecosystem? How do we ensure that we don't have a, you know, a mass extinction on the planet that includes ourselves, right? These are like emergency stopgap measures, but they're no good unless we address these underlying issues like the population and consume rampant consumerism and, and all of this crazy stuff. I mean, I, I just uh, in the oceanography stuff I've been looking at. Um, there's a good there's a good section on the Emirate of Dubai and how they're changing the coastlines. How they they they've basically dredged up millions of tons of of sand and created artificial islands in the shape of uh, a pineapple. You know, <laughs> and, yeah. and how they, they have all of these very wealthy people that are buying places on these artificial islands. And these things are all, the, you know, built, it's like, don't build houses on sand. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like the excesses, of, the excesses of humanity, you know, it makes you sort of wonder, do we, uh, you know, do we even deserve to have this planet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, we go, it's craziness, craziness. And then it extends to the, the politics and so on. So, you know, this, um, these ideas um, of, of, removing co2 and cooling the arctic and things like that these the, these ideas are yeah they're 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 not for trying to preserve by any means any of the systems that we have as far as rampant capitalism and exponential population growth and stuff they're they're trying you know it's more of a it's more of a survival thing so that you know people can live long longer term on 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 this on this planet and you know uh that everything doesn't completely collapse for us, which is what it's doing. What that's what exponential growth does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely. So I, I don't know if uh, that that answers your your question, but I guess maybe um, the you know the the pain still needs to get a lot greater for for people before they'll sit up and say, well, what do, what can we do? What are we going to do? 